Welcome back to another edition of Talk Nerdy to Me. I'm Jack Lutz. Troy Singer. And this right here. Ben Jones. That here. That right guy right here. Who is no stranger to, well, the uh, Las Cruces Comic Con, the El Paso Comic Con. Welcome to the show, Ben. How are you? Thank you for having me. I'm very happy to be here. Oh, <laughs> very, very happy to have you here. So uh, let's talk about your comic art. You know, I, I always, whenever I run into you at conventions, I see that you have one of the more sprawling uh, booths at the con with your artwork. Let's talk about uh, just you know, where it all happened here with your well, artwork. Where it happened. Where it when started. I first started, um, this was about seven, eight years ago in mm -hmm. Chicago at Chicago Comic Con. I went there with three prints, uh, 20 bucks in my pocket, um, and now I had to make enough money to eat. Wow. Uh, and I started watching everyone, and it's like any. Uh, any community where you're trying to make money against the next guy or the, the competition, you start realizing, hey, those guys are doing this, maybe I need to do that, and it just grew from there. And how did you get your name noticed? How did you get your name out there? I have really no idea. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've only done a, a, a few things in, as far as published work at, at Image, and mm -hmm. the main thing I think was social networking. Um, social networking with Twitter and Facebook, people started seeing my work more and more and more, and it, it just blossomed overnight. Hopefully it's because I'm good, but <laughs> I, you never know. <laughs> well, you beat us to the punch there. We're going to bring up uh, you know, the, the big publishers, you know, like Image and all that, and you, you just talked about, it, it's really, you got lucky, huh? More or less? Image lucky? Huh? No, huh? no. Image had a lot of, lot of help. They, they, had a, they, had, they had some faith. <laughs> had some faith in you early days of image yeah. uh well you know when i was talking with um jim valentino oh, well, let's um, uh, get a year here let's what year oh, was God. this uh, yeah 2000, 2000 early <laughs> yeah. uh it was when jim valentino was had his shadow line uh mm -hmm. side of the books and i started talking with jimmy robinson who was the creator of bomb queen okay um, and then I started talking with uh, Jim Valentino that was doing Emissary and Intimidators, which were fly-by-night type books, just pop up, see if they would stick. And I did a couple of pinups there that got published, and I was just happy that I, you know, got something published. And then started looking good on a resume, and then kind of snowballed, right? Yeah, it, yeah. it started g gaining a little mm -hmm. momentum. You know, people was like, oh yeah, I remember seeing this work. Uh, and then I, I did a pinup for Evangeline um, with uh, under Rob Liefeld's little area, and then uh, it probably kind of dried up because I had to put more concentration into what I was doing. Okay. And what were you doing? And, well, <laughs> I had a lot of false starts uh, trying to create a comic. Um, I had a lot of ideas, and I think I. It's very hard to start your own comic, by the way, just to put that out there. It's very easy to start. It's very hard to finish. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay. Everybody can draw a comic and write the story. Well, not everybody it's, can draw it. It's just I can't. Yeah, it just isn't that good. <laughs> it just takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, yeah. and a lot of money. So a lot of false starts. Yes. But, and uh, it's the old cliche: a lot of false starts, but all you need is just that one, that one good push, that one good, you know, finish for you and. What was that for you? Uh, that is the book I'm currently working on um, called Asgard. So, okay. And let's hear a little bit about that. Well, um, Asgard is my my mashup of mythology and theology all put together with a little uh, sci-fi-ness. Mm -hmm. um, mixing in the gods and angels all coming together on Earth to either defend themselves for survival or... Uh, try to find a, a way to where they can come out on top versus the humans. So where did this idea come, come from? Because when you hear Asgard, I, I guarantee you, a lot of the people that are watching, <laughs> oh, Thor, Thor oh, yes, oh, yeah, yes. you know, stuff like that, yeah. Uh, Asgard was mm -hmm. one of my false starts. Mm -hmm. Originally, I had six stories, oh. and I would go out and rush to get a logo made, because I had a really good guy that made really great logos. So, oh, I'm doing this book, and I would get a good, a good logo. And it would go nowhere. Mm -hmm. So one day I decided, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to 
smash all of these stories together because they were all based on either some ethereal or magical uh, tie-in and I was able to get all these stories to connect uh, all I had to do was create the ligaments to create the muscles and the to connect the muscles and the bones the Dr. Frankenstein yeah, yes it, it, is, it is a Frankenstein it's a creation yeah he yeah. wanted to be alive he wanted to live he wanted to be out there to put out there and and, and and whatnot. Well, I mean, it, it sounds very interesting. It sounds so. You're going to be penciling, writing. What are you going to be? I doing? am penciling, inking, and writing. Wow. Everything so. but coloring, right? Coloring, lettering, lettering or <laughs> yeah. <Her> learning. <laughs> man, man, yeah, man. Uh, I have uh, Gregory Price. Uh, he goes by Splash on mm -hmm. social network. He's doing all the paint job. And HDE Smith, a guy from um, England, he's been handling a lot of the independent books. Okay. And I, I got him to do the first 10 pages as a test run. Mm. Uh, and he did a wonderful job. I didn't have to guide him or anything. He just ran and did a wonderful job with the lettering. Okay. So he's going to be my go-to guy for the rest. Projected release date. Projected release date, I am looking at early 2017. Okay. Okay. And when you get a comic going... I've always wondered. I've always wanted to know this. When a comic is is in print, do you have to. How many issues do you have to stay ahead? Well, it's it depends on how fast the artist is. Mm -hmm. uh, in the independent world, it's almost impossible to get ahead. Yeah, like I was going to say, want. is it faster or slower? It's slower. It's yeah. because you know after you know talking with people like Brett Booth, uh, who also did a alternate cover for mm -hmm. my book. Uh, oh wow! He. You know he's able to draw every day um, when I'm working 60 sometimes 70 hours a week at the normal job I I might get two days or a day to draw wow. so that's why I'm trying to get away as far ahead as possible before the first issue gets out mm -hmm. because I don't want to release something and then people are like oh we like it when's the next one? No, oh, it'll be out in six months but you already have the story Completed in your head, right? Yeah, the story is, is done. Uh, it's just drawing the pages and getting the dialogue, um, kind of doing the, Jack, the Stan Lee, Jack Kirby way of doing it, but with myself. Essentially, I'm, I have an idea of what the story is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. I draw it out on the pages, and then I go in and, with the dialogue. Now, I like to ask this of all artists. Are you still at that point where you feel that putting, putting down a piece of paper, getting a pencil, just sitting there, Locking the world out. Is it still therapeutic for you? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I have three teenage girls, and uh, <laughs> when they're loud and, you know, screaming or whatever, I can just draw and I can blank out the world and I don't hear any of that. And then, it's like, and then my wife slaps me in the back and, hey, hey, how are you going to eat tonight? And then, <laughs> you know, four hours go by and didn't realize exactly. it. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it goes like that. Man. Okay. And I. I, I, I don't want to see the day where I, I see you again at another con and you're like, oh, draw it, man. Draw it. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, well, you know, it, it's a good thing. If I'm drawing, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm making You're money. happy. And I'm making and money. Yeah, and you're yeah. making money. <laughs> Here you go. Yeah, it's, it's not sketches for free mm -hmm. usually, mm -hmm. but, you know, uh, it's it's all part of it. Awesome. Just had a quick question. What artists or story, storytellers are you, do you look to for your muse? Uh, there's two. Uh, Chris Claremont, I love how he old X Men. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you know, comic books. Comic is the the drawing, and the book is the the, the verbiage, the writing. And Claremont, I mean, he really puts words on the page. It took you a good twenty minutes to read a normal twenty two page book. Mm -hmm. uh, With all the detail. Yeah, he he would actually expose these characters to you. Uh, and Frank Miller. For the artwork, artwork and writing, and writing. So like Daredevil, Batman, and his 300 yeah. series, 300. his Sin City stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. He really knows the genre that he plays in, and he does it so well. And then there's the Abnet and Landing guys that uh, did the remake of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Those guys, uh, they have created the they created the only book that I've sat down and just started laughing out loud just by their dialogue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, well, those were good answers. Yeah, they're just so disarming. Yeah. Also, <laughs> disarming. accepted Ditko. Kirby. <laughs> no, very disarming. No, those, well, yeah. I, I grew up, and my comic growing up period was the late 80s, early 90s. Um, Hence Claremont. Mm -hmm. Hence Claremont. Yeah. Um, so you're a big fan of the cartoon also? 
Oh, very yeah. much. Mm -hmm. Except for the Australian Wolverine. Well, well then the <laughs> pilot episode, yeah. <laughs> and ship on the back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dingo. If you don't know what we're talking about, watch the X-Men cartoon yeah. pilot. Or with, don't. Or, yeah, or yeah. don't. It's, it's, it's special. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, helmet special is what it is. <laughs> so, man, what do you think? Should we cut them loose? I am out of questions. All right. That was my question. <laughs> that, that was it. Ben, uh, so we're going to be seeing you at Las Cruces Comic Con? For sure. Awesome. And again, uh, book ending this interview, you'll see Ben Jones again with a sprawling, you know, this huge spread, big old DC poster that I, that I really admire. <laughs> really admire that poster, by the way. So you'll see his artwork. Be sure to catch Ben Jones at Las Cruces Comic Con. When's that going to be, Troy? This year, September 9th, 10th, 11th. September 9th. You almost got me. The 11th. <laughs> oh, man. Until then. All right. I'm Jack Lutz. Troy Stegner. That's Ben Jones. This guy right here. Good night. <laughs> Sleep tight. <laughs>